right now on Five on Your Side at 10. We didn't know what this person knew about us. But dangers on the internet. The effort now in Jeff City to stop child predators and hold social media apps accountable. Movie night for a buck? The St. Charles Theater ready to welcome you back with deals you can't beat. It's a beautiful way to be a part of the community and to support your community as well. It's Small Business Saturday. Why spending your cash local provides a lifeline for businesses where you live. Good evening. Thank you for joining us at 10. I'm Brent Solomon. Those stories in just a moment. But first, we want to take a look at what parts of our area could see light snow. That's when you head to sleep tonight. Meteorologist Gary Frank now with that and more. Gary. Yeah, good evening, Brent. You know, we've been talking about this for several days. The rest of the Weather First team has been uh, at least tracking this system and how it's going to impact us, at least throughout our region, right? And so that's what we're looking at ahead. You know, temperatures right now on the cold side, but it is really snowing on the other side of the state, and it's working its way as the transitional line is pretty much right near Warrensburg, Concordia, where you're really starting to see some of those heavy, wet snowflakes. I think by now, you're probably not driving to Kansas City. Uh, to, you're probably thinking about this in terms of tomorrow morning. Uh, that's where the heaviest of snow has been in Wichita, and that's where it's going to continue. But like I mentioned, as they zoomed in, really from Odessa, uh, right into Warrensburg, Marshall, and Concordia, uh, there's some light snow transitioning in Columbia, but not for us right now. And what we're going to continue to see is, as a reminder, the winter weather advisories are north of us. Now, temperatures have fallen locally, but notice how it's 28 in Kansas City, 32 in Warrensburg, but it's 37 in Jeff City, Rolla, 36. We're at the freezing mark, but this warm thumb of air that contains this moisture is settling in. And I think over the next several hours, that keeps us from really dropping below freezing. I think it's going to be around there, but we're going to be close to it. Notice these are above freezing. Most of this is rain. We'll talk about how that snow component plays into it and the impacts that are going to be felt regionally and locally Sunday morning. Gary, we'll see you in just a few minutes. Tonight, a 65-year-old man is in the hospital after someone shot him in the head. It happened on Claxton Avenue in North St. Louis County around 3 this afternoon. We don't know the name of that victim or what led to the shooting. Stay with Five on your side as we work to learn more. A suspect is in custody after a string of crimes in St. Charles County. It all started Saturday near the Bent Oak Apartments in Lake St. Louis. Police tried to pull over a stolen car registered out of Nevada. The suspect then crashed into a police car and then into a parked Mercedes Benz in an attempt to get away. One person who lives nearby caught the commotion on her balcony camera. Very few children live here, so. A lot of General Motors employees live here, so it's quiet. Nothing's sacred anymore. I mean, somebody comes through and just creates destruction. I'm glad I wasn't home, but I feel bad for the people that their you know, cars were damaged. Police eventually captured the suspect today and took him to Progress West Hospital. That's when he tried to escape from the hospital. He was quickly captured. Police now waiting for charges to be approved. A Missouri lawmaker in Washington now wants to hold predators and social media companies accountable for child enticement. This comes after our I-team investigated the soaring rate of dangers kids and teens are facing on the Internet. Our Christine Byers talked with Congresswoman Ann Wagner, who's hoping to do something. When a predator targeted this mother's daughter online, I just saw message after message and video after video. The woman who asked the I-team earlier this month to conceal her identity says it sent her family into paranoia. Her daughter thought she was talking to another 11-year-old on a messaging app called Kick. Her parents never saw it because she kept it hidden on her phone. Instead, it was a Clayton businessman now serving time for collecting her daughter's photos and videos. We didn't know what this person knew about us. These are the harmful effects of child enticement that Congresswoman Ann Wagner says she wants to stop, thinking exactly of this mother's story when she saw the I-team's report. I applaud her family for coming forward with the story. Congresswoman Wagner has introduced a bill that would require social media companies to give identifying information about suspected predators, extend the National Center for Exploited and Missing Children's retention on tips to one year. Right now, it's just 90 days. And eliminate the phrase child pornography from laws and replace it with child sexual abuse material. These children haven't given consent. But Wagner isn't the only politician to try to do something about the problem. 
A recent piece by a Columbia law professor estimates there have been 39 congressional hearings about children and social media since 2017. Why is your piece going to be any different from those that have come before yours and failed? Well, I, I will tell you, I think it's it's pieces like this that you're doing. We need more people to come forward to both media and also, um, um, more importantly, to their members of Congress and to, to politicians to say this is important. Our research backs up the importance. One study suggests in 2021, about one in six minors reported sharing their own images. I think young people um, have got to, to be made aware and uh, it starts at home. This mother thought she did make her daughter aware. They can't identify her daughter's predator by name. She signed a non-disclosure agreement as part of a civil settlement. That money is now paying for the therapy her daughter and family needs two years after she met her predator. She is not good. She's impulsive um, with boys. Like she, she snuck out with a couple boys. Her grades are terrible. We've included a list of tips on how to talk to your children about this topic, as well as warning signs on our website. For the I team, Christine Byers, Five on Your Side. Thank you, Christine. If you have a tip for Christine and the Five on Your Side I team, leave a voice message at 314 444 5231 or email tips at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. A beloved movie theater in St. Charles reopened this weekend after having to shut down due to a fire. Five on Your Side's Annie Crawl found out owners are hoping to provide you with more than just entertainment. We get to see the community come in and thank us and be thankful that this kind of establishment is back open. After a fire in 2019, this is what St. Andrew Cinema looked like. Holes in the roof letting rain in, vandals causing damage, and owners saying people were living inside the closed St. Charles Theater. That kind of uh, poverty is around here, you know, and, and this struck a big hole in the community and um, allowed it to be a breeding ground for things like that. But we hope to be a catalyst that we can help turn those people around and not turn them away, but give them a, a better chance. Those same hallways now painted with movie characters by local artists and one of the co-owners, Willie Butler III. We feel like it's a safe area for the kids to come after school, you know, like affordable. Just a good place. It's just not a abandoned place anymore, you know. It was horrible. Like, we, we cleaned it up real good. It was a sold out show here on Friday night. 240 people showed up for the Rocky Horror Picture showing at midnight. But owners telling me it wasn't easy to get to that kind of success. One big deep breath at a time. That's all you can do, and that's what we did. And there's still things to do, but we're open now. It's safe to be here. This team of entrepreneurs met when Anthony and Willie were 13, playing football together. Do it like I taught you, man. Come on. Do it like I taught you, dude. Now, they run a barbecue catering company, which is also served at the theater. Even cheaper than snacks, though. <laughs> Movies are only a dollar on Wednesdays to keep the experience affordable for the community. Reporting in St. Charles, Annie Crawl, Five on Your Side. And the theater is playing vintage movies right now, like Home Alone and The Goonies. Owners are also planning on hosting comedy shows and even a job fair at that theater in the near future. We are extremely grateful that hostages were released yesterday. And um, we are looking forward to, again, um, another group being released today. Hamas releases even more hostages. A look at who was set free and whether any Americans will soon be among them. We take you to Small Business Saturday. The local shops offering steals one day after Black Friday. Temperatures will play an important role into the overnight hours as this rain snow mix heads our way. Why it's such a factor and why just a few degrees makes a huge difference on what we're experiencing overnight. Right now on Five on Your Side at 10. We didn't know what this person knew about us. A dangers on the internet. The effort now in Jeff City to stop child predators and hold social media apps accountable. Movie night for a buck? The St. Charles Theater ready to welcome you back with deals you can't beat. 
It's a beautiful way to be a part of the community and to support your community as well. It's Small Business Saturday. Why spending your cash local provides a lifeline for businesses where you live. Good evening. Thank you for joining us at 10. I'm Brent Solomon. Those stories in just a moment. But first, we want to take a look at what parts of our area could see light snow. That's when you head to sleep tonight. Meteorologist Gary Frank now with that and more. Gary. Yeah, good evening, Brent. You know, we've been talking about this for several days. The rest of the Weather First team has been uh, at least tracking this system and how it's going to impact us, at least throughout our region, right? And so that's what we're looking at ahead. You know, temperatures right now on the cold side, but it is really snowing on the other side of the state, and it's working its way as the transitional line is pretty much right near Warrensburg, Concordia, where you're really starting to see some of those heavy, wet snowflakes. I think by now, you're probably not driving to Kansas City. Uh, to, you're probably thinking about this in terms of tomorrow morning. Uh, that's where the heaviest of snow has been in Wichita, and that's where it's going to continue. But like I mentioned, as they zoomed in really from Odessa uh, right into Warrensburg, Marshall and Concordia, uh, there's some light snow transitioning in Columbia, but not for us right now. And what we're going to continue to see is, as a reminder, the winter weather advisories are north of us. Now, temperatures have fallen locally, but notice how it's 28 in Kansas City, 32 in Warrensburg, but it's 37 in Jeff City, Rolla 36. We're at the freezing mark, but this warm thumb of air that contains this moisture is settling in. And I think over the next several hours, that keeps us from really dropping below freezing. I think it's going to be around there, but we're going to be close to it. Notice these are above freezing. Most of this is rain. We'll talk about how that snow component plays into it and the impacts that are going to be felt regionally and locally Sunday morning. Gary, we'll see you in just a few minutes. Tonight, a 65-year-old man is in the hospital after someone shot him in the head. It happened on Claxton Avenue in North St. Louis County around 3 this afternoon. We don't know the name of that victim or what led to the shooting. Stay with Five on your side as we work to learn more. A suspect is in custody after a string of crimes in St. Charles County. It all started Saturday near the Bent Oak Apartments in Lake St. Louis. Police tried to pull over a stolen car registered out of Nevada. The suspect then crashed into a police car and then into a parked Mercedes Benz in an attempt to get away. One person who lives nearby caught the commotion on her balcony camera. Very few children live here, so. A lot of General Motors employees live here, so it's quiet. Nothing's sacred anymore. I mean, somebody comes through and just creates destruction. I'm glad I wasn't home, but I feel bad for the people that their you know, cars were damaged. Police eventually captured the suspect today and took him to Progress West Hospital. That's when he tried to escape from the hospital. He was quickly captured. Police now waiting for charges to be approved. A Missouri lawmaker in Washington now wants to hold predators and social media companies accountable for child enticement. This comes after our I team investigated the soaring rate of dangers kids and teens are facing on the Internet. Our Christine Byers talked with Congresswoman Ann Wagner, who's hoping to do something. When a predator targeted this mother's daughter online, I just saw message after message and video after video. The woman who asked the I team earlier this month to conceal her identity says it sent her family into paranoia. Her daughter thought she was talking to another 11 year old on a messaging app called Kick. Her parents never saw it because she kept it hidden on her phone. Instead, it was a Clayton businessman now serving time for collecting her daughter's photos and videos. We didn't know what this person knew about us. These are the harmful effects of child enticement that Congresswoman Ann Wagner says she wants to stop. Thinking exactly of this mother's story when she saw the I-Team's report. I applaud her family for coming forward with the story. Congresswoman Wagner has introduced a bill that would require social media companies to give identifying information about suspected predators, extend the National Center for Exploited and Missing Children's retention on tips to one year. Right now, it's just 90 days. And eliminate the phrase child pornography from laws and replace it with child sexual abuse material. These children haven't given consent. But Wagner isn't the only politician to try to do something about the problem. A recent piece by a Columbia law professor estimates there have been 39 congressional hearings about children and social media since 2017. Why is your piece going to be any different from those that have come before yours and failed? Well, I, I will tell you, I think it's, it's 
pieces like this that you're doing. We need more people to come forward to both media and also, um, um, more importantly, to their members of Congress and to, to politicians to say this is important. Our research backs up the importance. One study suggests in 2021, about one in six minors reported sharing their own images. I think young people um, have got to, to be made aware and uh, it starts at home. This mother thought she did make her daughter aware. They can't identify her daughter's predator by name. She signed a non-disclosure agreement as part of a civil settlement. That money is now paying for the therapy her daughter and family needs two years after she met her predator. She is not good. She's impulsive um, with boys. Like she, she snuck out with a couple boys. Her grades are terrible. We've included a list of tips on how to talk to your children about this topic, as well as warning signs on our website. For the I team, Christine Byers, Five on Your Side. Thank you, Christine. If you have a tip for Christine and the Five on Your Side I team, leave a voice message at 314 444 5231 or email tips at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. A beloved movie theater in St. Charles reopened this weekend after having to shut down due to a fire. Five on Your Side's Annie Crawl found out owners are hoping to provide you with more than just entertainment. We get to see the community come in and thank us and be thankful that this kind of establishment is back open. After a fire in 2019, this is what St. Andrew Cinema looked like. Holes in the roof letting rain in, vandals causing damage, and owners saying people were living inside the closed St. Charles Theater. That kind of uh, poverty is around here, you know, and, and this struck a big hole in the community and um, allowed it to be a breeding ground for things like that. But we hope to be a catalyst that we can help turn those people around and not turn them away, but give them a, a better chance. Those same hallways now painted with movie characters by local artists and one of the co-owners, Willie Butler III. We feel like it's a safe area for the kids to come after school, you know, like affordable. That's a good place. It's just not a abandoned place anymore, you know. It was horrible. Like, we, we cleaned it up real good. It was a sold out show here on Friday night. 240 people showed up for the Rocky Horror Picture showing at midnight. But owners telling me it wasn't easy to get to that kind of success. One big deep breath at a time. That's all you can do, and that's what we did. And there's still things to do, but we're open now. It's safe to be here. This team of entrepreneurs met when Anthony and Willie were 13, playing football together. Do it like I taught you, man. Come on. Do it like I taught you, dude. Now, they run a barbecue catering company, which is also served at the theater. Even cheaper than snacks, though. <laughs> Movies are only a dollar on Wednesdays to keep the experience affordable for the community. Reporting in St. Charles, Annie Crawl, Five on Your Side. And the theater is playing vintage movies right now, like Home Alone and The Goonies. Owners are also planning on hosting comedy shows and even a job fair at that theater in the near future. We are extremely grateful that hostages were released yesterday. And um, we are looking forward to, again, um, another group being released today. Hamas releases even more hostages. A look at who was set free and whether any Americans will soon be among them. We take you to Small Business Saturday. The local shops offering steals one day after Black Friday. Temperatures will play an important role into the overnight hours as this rain snow mix heads our way. Why it's such a factor and why just a few degrees makes a huge difference on what we're experiencing overnight. Five on Your Side is sponsored by Carroll House Furniture. Beautiful furnishings at the lowest prices and free delivery too because you like nice things. Join us in celebrating Kia's season of giving back. Get 1.9% APR for 48 months plus 1,000 trade assist cash on select new 2023 Sorento or 2024 EV6 models. Those beans had sprouted overnight into something spectacular. Mom, 
Tis the season to work your magic. Get special offers on the 2024 ES350. No one wins alone. NASCAR is really a team sport. The team around you is, is ultimately what builds your success. You gotta have a coach, you gotta have people working with you. No different at Morgan & Morgan. That attorney has a great team behind him that makes them the winning team. You need your mechanics, your pit crew, to make everything be a cohesive group and all come together. Every team member that we have at RCR is key to our success. Without a team, you can't get to the finish line. However you do the holidays, do it together in the Chevy that's right for you. The strong and capable Chevy Silverado, the award-winning Chevy Equinox, or the all-new Chevy Trax. This holiday season, do more together in a new Chevy. Get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups, or current Chevy owners get 5250 total cash allowance on this Silverado. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the St. Louis area. Join us in celebrating Kia's season of giving back. Lease a new 2023 Sorento LX for $279 a month. Seventeen hostages were released from Gaza, and they've made it safely to Israel in a Red Cross convoy. Thirteen of them were Israelis, and the other four are Thai nationals. This comes after the hostage exchange deal between Hamas and Israel was delayed this morning. That's when Hamas accused Israel of violating their ceasefire agreement. A spokesperson from Qatar says that obstacle has been overcome. Well, photos are flooding in of family reunions in Israel after yesterday's first wave of hostage releases. All of the women and children freed yesterday received medical assessments after returning to Israel. None of the hostages released so far, though, are American. According to Vice President Kamala Harris, the Biden administration is working to bring the Americans still being held in Gaza home. So we're going to continue to be diligent and vigilant in doing all that we can in that regard to ensure that there is humanitarian aid going in, that hostages are going out, and our highest priority, of course, are the American citizens who are being held. U.S. officials say they're hopeful three Americans with dual Israeli citizenship can be freed soon. Israelis are not the only ones welcoming people home tonight. 39 Palestinian prisoners and detainees were released from three Israeli prisons as part of the country's deal with Hamas. 33 of those released were teenage boys. The rest were women. Many have gathered in the West Bank to welcome them home. For the latest updates on the war and those affected, text Israel to 314-425-5355. Well, we've got some snow off to our west, but that line is getting closer when it may impact us and who's most likely to see big wet snowflakes come Sunday morning. Well, Black Friday isn't the only big day for holiday shoppers. A lot of you supported local businesses today for Small Business Saturday. A North County Rec Center hosted a pop-up market for local businesses. And the City Foundry in Midtown also hosted their own small business event featuring 18 local vendors. One of them just starting to get their name out there. They say events like this are crucial for small startups. These are so important because honestly, like um, all of us have other jobs as well. And so it's hard to find time to be able to do our side jobs. Um, and this provides that opportunity and also allows for a concentrated place for people to find gifts for their loved ones and also to support local businesses that they would not have known of before. Now, if you missed these events today, City Foundry will also have holiday markets with local vendors every Saturday in December. We want to hear from you. Did you participate in Small Business Saturday? Text the word SHOP to 314-425-5355. Well, just a few hours ago, the St. Louis Zoo was highlighted on Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom for their work with hellbenders. They're one of the largest species of salamander in the world and native to Missouri, also called snot otters. Their population has been on the decline, though, dropping by about 70 percent over the last 40 years in the state. 
Folks from the zoo and Missouri Department of Conservation met with the show's hosts to show how they work to help save the salamanders. Time now for your complete weather first forecast. Meteorologist Gary Frank, hard at work in the weather center for us. You've got some light snow that some people will see today. Yeah, uh, well, I think, tonight. Yeah, I think uh, as we head, you wake up in the middle of the night, maybe look outside, you see that when it's really cold, or you wake up six, seven o'clock tomorrow, walk the dog, dog wakes you up, or you're getting ready to head to uh, Kansas City or Chicago or driving back. You know, the temperature is something that we're going to pay close attention to. And if you're from out of town, welcome. You're going to head back dealing with some snow on the other side of the state. We're above freezing. That's a key for us right now. We still have some dry air that's in place. So anything right now that's uh, just impacting us regionally is evaporating at the surface. So this doesn't have a lot of moisture with it. It's always something we look ahead to. We did get to 47 today. Uh, I did want to pull up this MoDOT cam. It doesn't. It looks super impressive, right? Um, and you can see the buffering. Really good stuff here. But what the point is that everybody's moving smoothly right now as I pulled this up from Concordia. That's where they're getting some pretty decent snow. The winter storm warning starting to get shaved off on the back end here, but that's where the core of the snow is if you're driving there. Winter weather advisory here for us, and even as I zoom in just a little bit, you'll notice north of Pike County, these areas still are not even impacted. So uh, even as I look ahead, this is where the snow, the rain snow line is, and that's the area that I showed you that is starting to see that transition where they're actually seeing that fall to the surface where the leading edge of this, even as I zoom in, closer to Pike County and areas in Bowling Green. This is not impacting you just yet, but Columbia starting to see that transition here where a little bit of rain snow mix. So, so far right now, temperatures at 28 in Kansas City. There's 37 in Columbia, and that's what we're going to be dealing with. It's kind of a little warm finger of air here in between there, and that's where the moisture lies. So here's what I think is going to happen overnight. Like you're going to start to see this transition still, but we're still not involved in it just yet. I did want to look at some of the road conditions on the other side of the state. This is all smooth sailing across 70. That's why the roads are still pretty solid, uh, partly covered, and then it's actually pretty covered on the north side of Kansas City. So around the 435 loop there, 35 north, you're seeing more of that. But it's a lot colder there. We don't have that cold air. We have rain. Temps in the mid-30s. I think we dropped down to 33 or 34. Flakes might mix in more than this is indicating, but this is not going to be impactful for us. Regionally, if you head north, you're going to maybe see some slowdowns toward Chicago, especially from flying out of Chicago or Detroit, or Detroit as you have that lake effect snow late Sunday. Some of the ripple effects may be felt, but this is not much moisture. It's a light rain. It's a cold rain. Flakes mixing in. Our ground is warm. The air temps over 32. The ground temps over 40. We're in pretty good shape, though. 42, 41, 43. Then we're going to start to see our temps warm right back up into next week. But, uh, you know, as far as travel is concerned, I don't think anybody's getting up and driving now that they've seen us. But <laughs> get up in the morning, I think most of the things in this side of the state be fine because they've right. already taken care of it. Very good. Keep yeah. us posted, my friend. We've got Corey standing by with sports. Huge football day on both the high school and college football gridirons. We had an all-time classic at CBC and a pair of heartbreakers at multiple levels in Illinois. Stick around. Sports is up next. The Sports Desk is sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. There is just something about this weekend. Rivalry week in college football and semifinal and state championship week for the high schoolers. It just has a different feeling to it. Today that feeling was drama and we had plenty of it. CBC and DeSmet was a classic today. Classic semifinal that felt like a state final. First half, Cole McKee puts it up and Jeremiah McClellan comes down with it. The Ohio State bound receiver had an all-timer of a day with an injured foot. Let's go right out of halftime now. The DeSmet defense roared. Josiah Houston picks six. And the very next play from scrimmage, Trevin Collard gets the fumble. He's gone for a score. 21-14 DeSmet. CBC answers. McClellan with a one-handed TD, one of the best catches you're ever going to see. We're tied at 21. After a CBC field goal, Dylan Duff to Mason Scornia. 28-24 DeSmet. But the cadets got the final word. McKee to McClellan again for another sensational touchdown. His fourth of the day. And that's it. CBC wins. 31 to 28. They are going back to Columbia to defend their state title. Coach Pingle, how about your star receiver and state bound team? I'm proud of him. I'm proud of his work ethic to get back and try to try to play one more time for his guys. And uh, I think we saw how special he can be whenever he's on the field. Yeah, our defense was lights out. You know, they only gave up 14 points. We, we gave 14 points on offense, unfortunately, again. But our guys were resilient. Our defense was lights out. Now to Cardinal Ritter, the Lions hosted Cape Central in a Class 5 semifinal. 
They're looking to go back to back as state champs too. The Lions Den is a highlight factory. Jamarian Parker gets loose. He's gone right past photographer David Muthen into the end zone for six points. They got some stars on defense too. Check out this pass breakup from Malik Perkins. That's an elite play, folks. Parker would get into the end zone again in the first half on the way to a Cardinal Ritter. 52 to 22 victory. Congrats to Coach Spade and the Lions who are heading back to the title game. East St. Louis in the state championship against Terry Grove. Flyers trying to go back to back as state champs as well. QB Pops Battle has had an amazing career at East St. Louis. He had a touchdown today, but he also got hurt, had to leave the game. Fourth quarter, Ravius Wood, you just saw get in the end zone. Flyers had the lead, but Kerry Grove drove all the way down the field, milking the entire clock, scored a late touchdown to take a three-point lead. They pick off East St. Louis's final hope to win 23-20 and end the Flyers' back-to-back -back dreams. Congrats as well to the Hillsboro Hawks. They are headed to their first ever state championship game after beating Lutheran North 34-12 in the Class 4 semifinal. What a season for Hillsboro. Frustrating doesn't seem quite a strong enough description for this Illinois football season. They had already lost three games by four points or less coming into today, and Northwestern added to that heartbreak. They also denied the Illini a bowl game. You will see this guy in the NFL very soon. Illinois lineman Johnny Newton is a beast. He had two sacks today to make up uh, 18 for his Illini career. This was his last game. This game was bonkers. Fast forward to the fourth. The St. Louis kid Isaiah Williams, he used to be a quarterback, turns back the clock here for a TD pass to Pat Bryant. 29-29, 8 Illinois at that point. Illini down 8 now. A minute left. John Paddock hits Casey Washington. It looks like what, he might be in store for a miracle. He takes it 80 yards for his third score of the game. But Illinois needs the two-point conversion to tie it. They can't get it. And Northwestern wins 45-43 to take home the Land of Lincoln Trophy and deny Brett Bielema and company bowl eligibility. SLU Hoops hosted Dartmouth and MICDS grad Brandon Mitchell Day tonight, the hometown kid. He had a nice night with a double-double. This one was way too close for comfort. Gibson Jimerson led the way with 23 points for the Bills, and SLU just hangs on at the buzzer for a 66-65 win over the Big Green from the Ivy League. We hope you join us Sunday night for Sports Plus. We've got a lot of Mizzou for you. We're going to hear from Coach Drinkwood, spotlight hometown QB Brady Cook, and compile our list of the 10 best Tigers of all time. That is Sunday night after football and the news. Another busy, busy Saturday in the books. A lot of exciting football. Yeah. There. It is that time for it. We've enjoyed your coverage of that, too. Thanks. Thank you, Corey. All right, Gary, what do we need to know when we wake up in the morning? Uh, well, we're going to hopefully sleep very soundly. That's all I can say. You can see pretty much where that dividing line of rain snow is going to be. It's really going to be north of our area completely. You can kind of see it starting to play out here on radar. Uh, it's starting to change over a little bit, uh, and that's going to be the case as we get closer to 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. But our temperature really never drops below 33 or 34. So while I think we see some rain mix in, some big wet snowflakes, we sent, get some pictures in for it. Uh, it will all be an afterthought and really not cause any issues. Lots of folks driving home yeah. tomorrow from Thanksgiving. Yep. All right. That's all of our time at 10. Thanks for the company. Saturday Night Live is next. We hope you have a great weekend.